Hello and welcome back to Mongolia. Today is where my trip truly begins. I'm in Flower Hotel, the one I showed a room tour of in my previous video. And I am leaving to go on what might be the most intense trip and possibly the best of my life. I am going for nine days, eight nights, into the Mongolian steppe, the Gobi Desert. We're not staying in touristy uh, yurts. We're staying in nomadic gurs with local people. It's supposed to be a local experience. I'm going with a company called Sunpath. I will leave their link in the description of each video that I film across this long trip. I'm not honestly sure quite how remote each place will be, although Mongolia is one of the emptiest countries in the world, for good reason. So I have joined up with my group, the van that we're taking is just over there. I'll show you in more detail later in this video or in another video. And we are stopping at a large hypermarket to pick up some last minute things before we leave the outskirts of Ulan Batar. It's a good supermarket, it has everything you might need. I've got to be honest, this supermarket has impressed me. Look how many staff there are working here, how fresh the fruit and veg looks, how organized it is. Very decent. So this here is the Sunpath Mongolia van, which is going to be our home pretty much, our nomadic home other than when we stay in local Gur camps for the next nine days, eight nights. A look inside the back. So three seats forward, three seats going backwards, a couple seats in the front for our driver and tour guide and our luggage there in the back. So we are taking a short break after a brief drive. We have now traded the city for the steppe and we are heading right down to a place called the White Stupa by the end of the afternoon today. It's still morning actually. We are gonna see the landscape transition from these vast open steppes, which becomes the mid Gobi. So it's like a rocky desert with patches of green. The further we go on our trip, the more we will get to the sand dunes, some of the most epic and big in the entire Gobi Desert. That's our van just there, Sunpath. There's another car belonging to Sunpath um, who are driving down with us today. And this is the main road. I've already lost signal on my phone. <laughs> So an update after more driving along the same long road south here. We're now in Dungov, the next region. The landscape is gradually getting more rocky and deserty as we're now in the mid Gobi, which is the transition sort of place. 
and we've seen our first Bactrian camels along the way. We also stopped for lunch at what was quite a popular restaurant. I had a meat stew, it was really good, along with my first taste of the milk tea, which you drink out of a bowl, and it's kind of salty, it almost looks like chicken soup, which is quite funny. Just a few more hours this way, and we'll be approaching the point where we'll be turning off-road to get to the white stupa, and I think it goes without saying. It's so interesting just staring out the window, the vast steppe all around, like an ocean, to be honest. It never seems to end, and I'm sure I'm gonna say a lot of that in the coming videos. So after more venturing south, we came off road. It's been extremely bumpy, but exciting. Just a dirt road to follow to reach eventually to the white stupa. Um, but we just saw a huge amount of camels here as we were passing by. So we came out to take a closer look, just seeing the Bactrian camels in the wild and stumbling across 50 to 100 of them is quite amazing. So following our very long drive, we have arrived at our first point on this nine day trip and it is the white stupa. It is not anything to do with the stupa other than its shape. It is actually a former seabed, as you can tell by the formation and the different sedimentary layers and the landscape around is breathtaking. You can just see for miles and miles as far as the eye can see and then you have these otherworldly rock formations with different tinges of reds and browns the erosion from the wind has given it its unique shape today Heading down to the bottom to see the views from beneath the white stupa, all the rock which used to be beneath the sea here, the layers unveiling themselves. You can see the changes in the rock over millions of years, the pink and then brown layer and at the top it's much darker. It's quite amazing. So we have just arrived at our Gur camp for the night in the nick of time for sunset just behind me there which just looks incredible. We're going to get many like this and I can't wait to see the stars later. Nothing around as you might expect. First time being amongst a Gur camp and sleeping in a Gur, staying with a Mongolian family. We just got greeted with some drinks, but I didn't want to shove the camera in their faces straight away. I will definitely show a whole experience of what it's like staying in a Gur in probably another video because it deserves a whole video. And I think I want to 
understand a little bit more about the process before I start filming and talking about something that I haven't learned properly yet and I've got um, seven more nights after this one so plenty of different girls in each place we're going to be staying with nomadic families these are not touristy uh, places so I'm going to enjoy the sunset and then it will be dinner uh, shortly I believe Hello. Hello, girl. Hello, girl. Hello. <laughs> Hello, girl. Uh, yeah, like, come, come on, you come. So, following our dinner, we have sat down in our girl. There is four of us in here sharing and it's pretty good actually. The bed is quite firm, I should say, and we have a light in here, which is decent. And tomorrow we're gonna be exploring a lot more, and I'm quite tired after I only slept a few hours last night, so I will see you again in the morning. Good morning, welcome back to Mongolia. <laughs> I slept not bad for my first night. It took me a few hours to begin with, but once I found my spot I think I was okay. I'm about to have breakfast now, just packing up and getting ready to go. There is a shack over there which is the toilet out in the middle of nowhere and there's not much running water here it's just a little tiny tap which drips you can only sort of brush your teeth you need hand sanitizer and um, wet wipes really to try and uh, clean yourself and perhaps at some of the other camps we'll get a little bit more running water but uh, I need to grab my breakfast now and then we'll be on our way to some more exciting places today <laughs> Another caravan of Bactrian camels there, uh, just next to the camp. It's amazing how many wild animals you see here. And um, just driving yesterday all the way down, seeing different camels, horses, ebex, sheep, goats, all sorts. Birds too, because it's such an open area, you can always spot a bird flying in the air because it's so obvious. And also the same goes for any animals. You can see them from a mile off in the vast open expanse. So a long drive once again today from where we left our camp this morning. We are now in the next province south, Umnu Gobi, which means South Gobi. This is where you'll find the sand dunes amongst many other things. Sand dunes only take up 5% of the total area of the Gobi Desert, but certainly there's a lot less grassland, although we have now entered into a valley called Yol Valley. We're doing a four kilometer hike. Once again, we saw a caravan of camels and this time much closer, we stopped to just take a look. It's amazing seeing so many of them in large groups, just wandering in the wild. There are over 450,000 Bactrian camels here in the Gobi Desert of just Mongolia. That's not including China's site. So you can see a few people ahead of me there. That's my group for this nine day, eight night tour with Sunpath, my driver, tour guide, who are both excellent. And then we've got three people along with myself and they're around the same age as me, 27, 28 years old. And one guy is from Spain, one guy from the Philippines and there's a girl from Canada. So that's the makeup of my group, if you're interested to know. 
It's a small group, which is nice. You know, you don't have people bothering you all the time, trying to take pictures, getting in the way, but big enough to be social, but also moments of quiet and not too many people. And I always find on trips like these, you connect with people better when it's a smaller group. You feel like you're all in it together, going through bumpy roads and staying in Gurs and experiencing Mongolia together for the first time. We're actually quite high in elevation here, so it's cooler than you might think. A nice breeze and the fact you're in a valley too, it just stops the heat getting a bit too much. Normally there is ice, like a thin blue vein, working its way through the valley until things open up. That ice unfortunately has melted already this year. 20, 25 years ago, the ice used to be here year round. However, because of climate change, that's no longer the case and it melts usually in July these days. So if you want to see the ice, you need to come to Mongolia during a colder time of year. So this valley is named Yol Valley after a rare and famous bird of prey here in Mongolia. James, as a Filipino, what are your first impressions of Mongolia? Uh, the place is really nice and the people are great. Now you may have heard Mongolia referred to as the land of the eternal blue sky. And the reason for that, of course, is because there's very few clouds and very few clouds means very little moisture and little rainfall across most of the country. And it's a very dry country. So this here is where the valley is at its narrowest and it's going to open up again dramatically. And here we are reaching the end and the sunlight peeking through here to this part of the valley. We're gonna make our way to tonight's Gur camp now after walking back the way we came. A short drive from the Yol Valley and we have arrived at our camp for the night. That is the Gur I'm staying in right behind me. I will show you inside in just a second. The sun is disappearing beneath the hills there and it's only day two but already adjusting to the nomad life although it's not really a, a complete experience but it's it's uh you get an appreciation for water because there's such a lack of it in the lands and the experience let me show you before I take you inside. It's the same as in the last camp. Just a tap here that sprinkles out a little bit. And that's all, you can brush your teeth, you can splash some water on your face. Let's take you inside my gur here. There's four of us staying in this gur. So there are four beds, much lighter than yesterday, so I can actually show you properly. There are five beds. James over there. And it's pretty, pretty cozy inside, quite warm. And this here is the top. I love the details on the wood. And there is a rock holding everything together, which is amazing and also a little bit scary at the same time. So we're going to have dinner soon before I end the video and 
This one just showed the journey leaving the city, getting to the steppe, and now we're in the full Gobi, really, the southern part of the Gobi here in Mongolia. And tomorrow we're going to be visiting or walking along some of the largest sand dunes in the whole of the Gobi Desert. So we're going to see a lot more of a stereotypical desert in the next video. This is the typical Mongolian vegetable soup. And then we believe that the potato is a, is a vegetable, we use it. And we always eat it with the rice. Okay. Usually it's with the cool. rice. Okay, enjoy your dinner. Good morning. It is day three here of our nine day trip around this country. Our camp is down there. I just came up the hill. That's why I'm slightly out of breath because we are leaving very shortly for the largest sand dunes in the Gobi Desert, reaching up to 300 meters high the following day to the Flaming Cliffs. The next video is gonna show you the more classic desert experience that you might associate with the Gobi, when in actual fact, most of the Gobi looks more like this, green which makes it unique. But there's been more rainfall this year, which is the reason why we're lucky it's so green. So I'm gonna head back down because they're probably waiting for me to get going. Hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you a good taste and introduction to Mongolia. I'm gonna try and get some more interactions with local people, show the intricacies of the gur, the food up close and a lot more detail than just this first video which was showing my journey getting down here to the south of the Gobi, the south of the country. And once again the link for Sunpath, the tour company I'm going around Mongolia with on this trip is in the video description. See you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>